YouTube, what is good? Hope everyone is having a great Wednesday out there. Today is a direct response to a question I got from someone. They asked, what is the one lens you could not go without? If you could only have one lens, what would it be? And guys, my answer is the 35 millimeter F 1.4. I could get rid of everything else, but I don't think I could ever get rid of this lens. So today I just want to break down why, what I enjoy about this lens so much, why it is the one that I would not get rid of. As always, if you have a question and you want to get it answered, let me know in the comments. And then who knows, one day I might make a video like this for your question. Also guys, do me a solid. If you enjoy the video, hit that thumbs up. It's all I ask. So let's break this down. 35 millimeter is a classic lens, a classic lens that everyone should try. It's not necessarily for everyone, depending on what you're into. Like you're not about to use a 35 to shoot wildlife, but it is a classic street photography, a classic documentary photography lens because it gives you a real world view. Essentially 35 millimeter is the closest standard focal length to what your eye actually sees. So when you go out and make a photo with 35 millimeter and show it to someone, it's easy for them to put themselves into the photo because it looks like something they would see. And 35 millimeter is like the perfect focal length to balance a subject and a background, which is another reason why it's so great for documentary work. You can have a subject and then you have the background to give it a little bit of context. It's not too wide, it's not too tight. It is just right. But that's one of my favorite things about the 3514 because it falls into that nice middle range between not too wide, not too tight. You can use it for standard portraits or you can use it for landscapes if you want. Whereas say you're using a 50 millimeter, you can get some great portraits, but probably not the best landscape. 24 millimeter, you can get some great landscapes, not necessarily the best standard portrait. Obviously there's exceptions to those rules depending on what situation you're in, but just having one lens, the 35 that can do both is very very nice. A few years ago, I shot this project with Converse and Greg Mike. It was for Juxtapose. It was the back cover. It was this photo right here. And this was really the project that made me fall in love with this lens so much when I really realized the potential it had. You guys know me, you know I'm a little bit OCD when it comes to photo sets. I like everything to feel right together. I don't like things feeling out of place. And when I was shooting that project, I was changing lenses a lot. I was using like my 14, 35, 85, but I didn't like how the photos didn't feel uniform. And that was when I realized the true potential of a 35 millimeter. I could get on the lift with Greg, I could shoot him while he was painting. It felt like you were right there with him, but then just take a few steps back, you can get the whole wall in the photo. So after like one day on that project the rest of the week I think I shot the entire thing on a 35 millimeter including the shot that was used by Converse right here and uh that mural has been long painted over. That was a cool project, but it was a few years ago. So versatility, storytelling ability is great, but the last thing I want to talk about, the reason it's not just a 35, it's got to be a 35-1.4 is the night photography ability of a 35-1.4 lens. You go out to shoot at night, you want to do some night street photography, <laughs> That 1.4 is a beast. Once again, you guys know me, you know I hate carrying a lot of stuff. I never bring a tripod out to shoot with me at night because I got the 35.1.4, I don't need it. With this lens, you open it up to 1.4, you can let so much light into your sensor. Nowadays, most cameras can go up to like 1600 ISO, 2000 ISO without a problem. You set your camera there, maybe you drop your speed, Pfft, money. So yeah, modern camera technology, modern sensors, plus a 1.4 aperture lens, you're in business. Night photography made easy. Absolutely love this lens. If you've never shot with a 35 millimeter, I highly recommend at least trying it out, you know, using it to try to tell a story or something like that. Great thing about 35s as well is there is a lot of variety out there. You don't necessarily have to get the 1.4 version just to try it out. But even if you did, now Sigma makes a phenomenal 1.4 lens for under a thousand dollars. It's like $8.99, I think. I've had this one for close to three or four years now, something like that. At least over three years, I think. And, uh, it's held up, metal, nice and solid. So yeah, that is it. That is the answer to that question. Shout out to whoever asked me that. So tonight I'm shooting a very cool, very informative video for you guys, but I wasn't sure what time I was gonna get home. Didn't wanna push it and miss an upload because we are not doing that anymore on this channel. Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So look out for that video coming out Friday. It is cool. It's got a lot of good information in there. And you know, I might do a little bonus vlog tomorrow. We'll see. But like I said at the beginning, guys, if you want your question answered, you want me to talk about something, feel free to let me know in the comments. Also, let me know your favorite lens. Answer that guy's question down there in the comments for yourself. What is the one lens you could not go without if you had to get rid of everything else, could only have one? 
what would it be? Hope everyone's having a great day out there. I will catch you guys tomorrow or on Friday. Uh, hit that thumbs up. Subscribe if you're new. See you next time. But don't speak yeah. in my gear words. Sometimes I like to tangle. Sometimes I like to tango dancing with these words. But I can't accept my thoughts, so it's getting worse. I gotta let it out.